歡迎嚟到咧係 Love Hong Kong Love You 誒、呃，我哋大師班嘅環節啊嚇。咁我係 Water 喺今日嘅誒 Moderator。咁啊，講到大師班咧，今日請嚟嘅嘉賓咧，可以話係大師中嘅大師嚇。佢、啊、就係香港大學校長張翔教授。Hello， 校長你好。呃、我知道你最近都喺度學緊廣東話係咪啊？咁你不如用廣東話同大家打個招呼，打個招呼好唔好？大家好，大家好，<笑>有很有很有進步，校長很有進步。<笑> OK， <笑>好，那、呃、首先首先就是代表我們 Love、呃、Hong Kong Love You 的這個、呃、所有的觀眾啊，謝謝你今天抽時間。来跟我们上这一课哈，那其实呢 ，Love Hong Kong Love You 在呃起播以来哈，就是在疫情最呃应该是疫情最严峻的时候，我们就开始了呃这个一系列的课程呐、啊、等等，那包括呢就是防疫的第一手资料，然后就是一个知识的传播，呃，像我们的呃两位呃副校长哈都有呃把他们的一些的对经济方面的这个跟大家分享，另外呢就是呃心灵的。啊、呃，是呃，心灵健康的一些的呃题目，因为在疫情当中，大家也是有一点苦闷呢、啊。那在怎么样去呃调节自己啊？这个我们在 Love Hong Kong Love You 的这个频道也有提及。那其实呢，很呃很多的人也表示呢，他们受益非常多。那我知道这个 program 啊、呃，刚刚开始是您的一个这个 idea。那为什么当时有这样的想法呢？啊、呃，首先谢谢 Water。啊、呃，这个我今天有幸到这里来和大家做个交流。嗯、呃，这个我的广东话不好，正在学习，所以我今天用普通话。<咳>那么，嗯、呃，这个呃，我想这次疫情啊，对我们啊、呃、香港的这个市民也好，学生也好，都很大的冲击。那么也是我们看到啊、呃，很多的这个啊啊、呃呃，这个前线的医生啊、护士啊，都在帮助香港社会。那我们香港大学能做什么东西呢？那么我们首先呢，在二月中旬的时候，我们就决定了在鹿幼堂设立这个育苗这个中心，帮助我们啊、呃、老年人，我们的啊呃,呃这个儿童来做育苗。那么这个是为他们做一个一道防线了，作为一个 defense <咳>。那另外呢，后来呢，我也在想，和我的同事在想，这个我们香港大学还能做什么呢？那么首先想到这个疫情啊，是尽管这个。呃，很多政府的这个要求，比如说 social distancing 啊，这些都是很好的，而且对保护我们的老年的这个市民是非常有用的。但是同时呢，也造成了我们很多年轻的学生啊、呃，还有一些孩子们，那么他都在这个圈在家里面了啊、呃，动不了了。所以的话呢，怎么样能够保持他们这个枯燥的这个生活，能有一些生活的气息，同时呢，能够让大家学到一些知识啊，交流一些这个有趣的事情啊。保持我们的精神健康，所以呃，这是主要的一些呃想法。所以我们西这个香港大学做这些事，想是为香港社会做些贡献了。嗯嗯，对对，校长，毕竟香港大学是一个知识的殿堂嘛，所以这个也是希望呃，在呃这个疫情当中哈、啊，大家不忘啊去增值自己啊。所以我我觉得呃，我我自己。能够呃一起参与这个也是非常非常的高兴哈。那在今天呢，您呃选的一个题目呢，跟我们呃上的一课是呃 How does science transform our daily life 啊？科学如何改变生活啊？那那在你呃做这个呃 presentation 在这个分享之前呢，有一个问题就是说，说到科学啊，是 physics 物理是一个。很大的一个科目啊，那物理的世界呢，它是一个千变万化的世界。那香港香港在回归呃这个呃祖国以后呢，呃国家对我们的政策呢是啊、呃、一国两制五十年不变。那在呃这个当中，你也是一个科学家哈，你觉得呃现在回归已经过了一半二十五年了，未来二十五年它应该不变的地方在什么？但是。同样，一定有些东西也在变。那变的应该是什么呢？在不变与变中间的智慧应该是怎么样？好、哦，谢谢李 Water， 这个问题很有哲学性啊。呃，我想呢，<笑>首先引用我们中国人啊、呃、喜欢讲的一句话，叫“以不变应万变”。那么，变是一个长恒的一个一个一个真理。那是这个我们尤其香港在回归了以后呢，我们有这个。呃呃呃，国家给我们很多优惠的政策，有很多这个很好的
呃东西保存下来。那么我想呢，尤其是这个一国两制啊啊、呃，这个在全世界呃独一无二的。那么我们呢，在一国两制当中。啊，一国和两制要都要做好。那么我们香港啊、呃、和这个香港这个市民啊，都实际上啊、呃、在享受着这一国两制的很多的呃好处啊、呃。比如说，我们既是作为中国的一部分，我们为国家做贡献，同时呢，我们也享受着很多自由的市场啊、呃，这个呃呃很多我们自己的一些啊、呃、这个空间。所以的话呢，我觉得呢，在现在。尤其经过过去几年啊，那么困难的时候，我们香港更要思考，就是说，仅仅是啊、呃、不变啊、呃，还是是一边有变，一边没有变。那么不变的是，我们还是一个国家，我们还是一一呃这个这个呃一国。那么变的话呢，也就是怎么样把两制用好。这个两制啊，其实可以给香港，呃，不单单是我们的经济、我们的文化，还有我们的生活带来很多益处。同时呢，也是为国家在探索一些新的这个经济模式啊啊，怎么样？怎么样为这个国家的国际化啊，尤其在教育上面做贡献？所以这些都是应该这个我们呃在香港能够享受到，同时呢，我们更加发扬光大的地方。所谓的变与不变是个辩证的关系。那么不变的话呢，实际上是要保持这一国两制。呃，要变的呢，是我们要与时俱进，也就是说，世界是是在变化的。那么二十年前啊，三、呃、十年前我们还没有这个 Internet， 啊、呃，没有这个网络。现在有网络了，那么新的工业出来了，啊、呃，新的这个应用出来了。那现在大家都知道，这个你可以在网络上面订一餐饭，马上就，啊啊啊，二十分钟半个小时就到了。那么这个是以前的生活想象不到的。那么这样的话，我们其实。香港的社会，香港的这个呃呃居民，我们要这个呃呃与时俱进，要想一想，尤其在过去这几年的呃变化和这个我们的疫情过后，我们香港怎么样重新出发？哎，怎么样重新出发？就这里面有很多应该思考的问题，而大家这个争论各个方面都是很好的，呃，因为我们香港有这个啊、呃、氛围，大家还是这个可以表达自己的观念。但是呢，同时呢，我们要意识到，大家怎么样都能理解对方，理解不同的观念，从而呢，大家找到一条为香港发展、为香港的未来做贡献的路。而这个呢，必须是服务于所有香港呃市民的福祉的。哎，所以我想呢，这个疫情过后，大家应该坐下来，好好的这个想一想，我们怎么样去发展香港，怎么样让香港成为世界领先的国际都市。是是，校长，其实就是科学告诉我们，其实很多事情都呃变，而且可以变得越来越好。但是有一个，我相信绝大是绝大部分的市民都有一颗心是不变的，就是希望香港是越来越好啊，这个是可能是不变的。好，那呃今天呢，就是嗯、呃、非常的高兴啊，校长来了，因为校长本身是一个科学家，呃我们今天呢。就要看一看啊，到底在校长的心目当中，他的睿智里面觉得科学怎么样可以改变我们的生活啊、uh, ？Ladies and gentlemen, may I uh now present uh, Professor Zhang Xiang uh to do his presentation on how does science transform our daily life? 校长交给你。好，谢谢 Walter。In the slideshow, okay.、Um, today I will use English because most of my、uh, scientific work are in English. So、um, I will show actually how、uh, the science transform、uh, our daily life. Now, before I begin, I will show you actually.、Uh, you see, today I wear a shirt, right? A lot of us wear shirt. There today actually there are some shirt、uh, after you wash wash it you just dry it you don't have to iron it something called wrinkle free shirt you don't have to iron it okay this wrinkle free shirt essentially is a technology that when you actually、uh, finish manufacture a shirt you put a thin coating of nano materials that material keeps wrinkle free. Now, where that material come from? It actually is from、uh, something unrelated, fifty years ago, 
when the scientists study the space science, try to send the air, uh, the uh, spacecraft to moon. That time, people invent new materials for the use of space in the space shuttle uh, in the outer space to the moon. But at the same time, people has starting because of this discovery, using the dis same discovery for space science to transform that into uh, such a wrinkle-free uh, applications. So you can see the unrelated uh, two missions eventually after 20, 30 years translate into our daily life. Now some of uh, us actually have a shirt, so-called wrinkle-free shirt. So today, let me tell you uh, how science transform uh, daily life in my own research and as a small story. Let's uh, watch a little movie and use some of, this is from CNN 2008. Hollywood is quite good at making stuff disappear. Whoa! From Harry Potter to James Bond. We call it the vanish. And the effects keep getting more advanced. Oh, very good. You should really think anything is possible. But Jason Valentine isn't talking about the movies. He's the 26-year-old scientist at Berkeley working to make invisibility cloaks possible. I mean, it's cool. It, it, it makes it fun to come to work. He and his colleagues have engineered a microscopic material that can bend light. The stuff called metamaterial is no bigger than a speck of dust. This is what it looks like magnified about 50,000 times. So to cloak something, you have to bend light around it. Uh, it's like a stone sitting in a stream of water. Uh, and so to bend light around the object, you have to make it bend in a way that it doesn't exist in normal materials. The material, of course, would have to be a lot bigger and configured in a way where it could be a cloaking device, say a blanket like in Harry Potter. What is that? Some kind of cloak? You see this stuff in the movies and, and a lot of it you think, well, that's, that's never really going to be possible. If you're not an engineer, what they say probably will make very little sense but their breakthrough has the scientific community quite excited. We won't see anything certainly within 10 years. Uh, however, maybe in our lifetime, uh, something will be made that, that resembles maybe something in science fiction movies. If you're a non-believer, consider this. 50 years ago, do you think anyone really conceived of things like iPhones or robots on Mars? Harry Potter special effects? What's an invisibility cloak? Well, maybe one day they won't be so special. Really? Dan yeah. Simon, CNN. Berkeley, California. All right, uh, so that actually is uh, uh, one of my research work and Jason Valentine uh, was my student at that time, uh, 14 years ago. Now he's a professor at the Vanderbilt University in US. Um, so we actually, uh, at the time, my student and I uh, as a team, and work, we work together to create these uh, magic materials that can make things invisible. Um, so how we make these materials, um, let me, uh, okay. So let me go back to the science. And to achieve this uh, uh, goal of make something invisible, uh, this of course is uh, many centuries of aspiration a human being has been dream about that uh, to uh, hide something or make something invisible. But go back to science 20 some years ago, um, a, group of a group of scientists include, include myself and also some uh, colleagues from Imperial College, uh, John Pendry and others. And in UK, we collaborate and developed a group of materials, so-called so meta materials. Today, meta uh, is very hot called metaverse, right? Uh, in the uh, cryptocurrency and all of this. Um, but 22 years ago, uh, Meta, uh, actually we pick up this Meta, uh, add the materials. Namely, this is the materials, magic materials go beyond ordinary. So let's take a look of the uh, typical crystals what we have, um, where you have atoms lined up in a very ordered fashion and they form something to call crystals. And this is how different crystals form a different structures like a diamond uh, we use that as a jewelry or as a computer chips, as a silicon. So each atoms can function in different way, but not only each atoms uh, function in certain way, but also a crystal 
behaviors de depends on how they are arranged. In the other words, how collectively they behave. Okay, so inspired by these nature crystals, which are made by each atoms. Now we can imagine we can magnify each atom to thousands, millions of times. Then these blue spheres are are, are so called artificial atoms or meta atoms. Okay, so this actually artificial atoms can be uh, glass beads or can be nanoparticles um, or can be a much bigger stuff. Okay, and these can form a composite like what you see this uh, moving uh, uh, thing. You can embed it then into uh, elastic materials like rubber. You can stretch them 100 times and so on. So you can make something movable. But at the same time, that each of these blue spheres, uh, so called meta atoms, can, we can ascribe certain functions into that. And also by engineer how they are arranged, whether in a cubical lattice or or, or different size of uh, 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 qubits, we can engineer their properties as a crystal. But this is an artificial crystal now. So this composite thing, it's called meta materials. It's a material by design. And you can make different atoms and so on. So this is the only equation I promise we have here, but uh, I, it's a something called Maxwell equation. Uh, Mr. Maxwell is uh, one of the most famous physicists uh, in the last few centuries. And he described uh, how the waves, electromagnetic waves or light waves, travels in space, whether in the water, in glass, or in air. And these are all dictated by his famous Maxwell equation. Now, there are two things that are very important, how the, the waves travels in the media, whether water or glass, okay? One is called electric property, the other called magnetic property, okay? So that's good, electrical magnetic. These two labs actually in, enable us to design many uh, interesting applications such as computer chips or uh, uh, eyeglasses like, like you, what you use, okay? But however, however, the nature somehow didn't give us all the things we want. So if you look at this four quadrant here and electrical property described by epsilon and mu described by the magnetic property, okay? And uh, epsilon, mu, both large, larger than zero, that is something called dielectric, water, glass, okay? And then on the other hand, one uh, mu larger than zero, epsilon smaller than zero. That's metals, ionic crystals, okay? And then actually mu less than zero, epsilon larger than zero. That's the lower uh, 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 lower quadrant, uh, lower right. But something is missing. That is electrical magnetic property, both simultaneously active, which is this yellow quadrant, quadrant on the lower left. This part later does not give us any materials fitting to that. And that is actually imperfect work in a sense. So how we are going to make a work perfect, it means that we need to find or engineer the materials in this uh, 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 missing quadrant that nature didn't give us. So that actually is the uh, science curiosity uh, start at 2000, year 2000. It took us uh, eight years and we were able, my student and myself and my collaborators, we were able to build a first uh, bulk materials, which has the lactive property, where that electrical and magnetic property, both lactive. What does that look like? Well, this is cartoon made by a, a science magazine uh, editor. And as you see, uh, on the left is a water in a glass, and you have a continuous straw, okay? not just while we, in Hong Kong, we have a boba tea, right? This straw is continued, not broken, but if you look at from side in the water, uh, in the glass, it looks like a broken, but this is something called refraction. Light refraction is an illusion, actually. But now, if we imagine water, glass, all have a po positive index, but if we engineer the materials, have a negative index or negative water, and the straw will look like bended wrong way. 
the other side. But of course, we will never see that in our daily life because what our human daily work is all deal with the positive index materials, air, water, glass, and so on. But this selective index materials is what we engineer, but it's very, very interesting material. It's not naturally existed, but we engineer, we made this artificially by hand, and therefore it's a material not existing in nature. But what is that useful? Well, if you imagine, and this is uh, again, my student, Jason Valentine, uh, that time uh, now he's a professor Valentine. Um, he uh, made the cartoon. There's a fish in the pond and a boy uh, on the bank of the water uh, of the side. Uh, we'll look at the fish inside of a uh, pond. Now, if the pond of the water is not the real water, it is elective water, okay? And that actually for the observers, uh, this young boy, he will look at the water as if water flying above the water, uh, uh, as if the fish flying above the water upside down, upside down. That is because this water now turns into lactic value in terms of refraction, okay? So um, this is of course, is something very magic. You don't see the water uh, flying above the, uh, 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 you don't see the fish flying above the water and upside down uh, very often, right? You see a goldfish inside of a, a tank, but not above the water in the tank. So if this material can be realized, it can, be have, have, can, can have a tremendous of applications that will transform our life, human life. For example, that enables nanoscale imaging. Now, as we all know that um, today, uh, we're talking about COVID and COVID virus are very tiny. It's only 30 nanometers are about maybe a thousand times smaller than a human hair diameter. Okay, very tiny. You don't see through your lake eye. You don't see them under the optical microscope. You only can see them under something called electron microscope, very special instrument. But you know that uh, in the uh, in the hospital and, and so on, we always use a microscope to see uh, biological tissues, cells, and to help the doctors and so on. But the doctors cannot see something beyond the limit of microscope. That is called diffraction limit. Usually, that is at one micron scale. It's about one percent of the uh, of the hair diameter. But we are talking about virus at the one thousandth of hair diameter. So that's 10 times smaller or even smaller. So, and this will enable a direct optical imaging of the virus, which are impossible to, uh, uh, yesterday. So also that can help you to produce a new type of computer chips. And we all know that uh, the computer chips uh, uh, workhorse to make a computer chips is something called lithography machine. And that is very expensive machine now, um, uh, 100 million US dollars and so on, very expensive uh, uh, tool, but it's a workhorse for making computers. So that is the other application. And third is uh, uh, many of us know that in a hospital, you have some call, something called magnet, magnetic resonance imaging. It's called MRI for uh, looking to inside the body, the tumors and so on. But to have high resolution, look at very early stage of cancer, you need a very special, very high-end MRI. And this technology with elective refraction could possibly help you to do so, okay? And then not to say many other applications. So how we can make um, a classical microscope, some of you know that uh, in the high school that this microscope, uh, our teachers and students often use that to observe the plants, leaves, and biological cells. But this microscope, it's hard to see the, the machinery inside of a cell, like a DNA, uh, proteins, and so on directly, directly, without some other tricks, okay? So therefore, uh, 150 years ago, a German scientist called Abbey, um, Ernest, Ernest Abbey actually discovered there is a fundamental physical limit. It's called diffraction limit. With any optical lenses, you cannot see below certain scale. That is called uh, uh, optical diffraction limit, typically around 
maybe 1% uh, of the di hair diameter, okay? So what we are looking at is if we can make such lactive uh, materials, lactive index materials, the light bended in the wrong way, but uh, hey, something magic here. And you use this to make a piece of lens that can break this 150 years old uh, diffraction limit. Therefore, making the uh, smaller objects such as DNA or proteins visible. So that will be great. So we turn it, we turned the uh, lame, we turned this uh, piece of magic uh, lens called super lens because it has much uh, uh, higher resolution than before. So if this can be work out, that would be great. So um, uh, more foundation in US and more is the uh, uh, founder of the Intel uh, uh, company, which make computer chips. Um, but you know that uh, many of these great industrialists, um, they will donate their money, form a foundation to help uh, scientists to advance uh, the discoveries to build the things that to benefit the humankind. And this is fortunately, we got uh, $12 million US dollars to carry out this uh, uh, discovery and build uh, such an optical nanoscope. So this uh, was the work we uh, you know, uh, did before I came to Hong Kong uh, at the UC Berkeley, where we uh, use, uh, developed the first uh, uh, super resolution imaging of single molecules uh, through a small animal, through a small animal. And this is actually a very, very exciting development. Uh, first time you can use a single molecule to view through the animal body. So these magic materials enable you to see something impossible to see before, such so-called super lens. But however, it also can enable the other extreme of the application, make something you see all the time, you know, your friend's face or a car or something disappear. So that is called invisibility cloak. You make something, usually you can see, but make it disappear, right? That's opposite than what the super lens does. Saying again, these magic materials can do that trick can do that trick. Now, before I talk about it, let me talk about, let me show you, this is the uh, uh, a young art student, uh, Sarah Watson in UK. Well, this was taken uh, almost 13 years ago. Um, she was uh, a college student, uh, art student. She make a car disappear in the parking lot, a car park, by simply painting the continuously these uh, stripes of yellow stripes over the car. And also into the background, you see the white, uh, the background and also the red uh, frame, the doors, that's her studio, our studio. So she paint the whole car upper body into the background. So if you look at the first glance, the car disappear. You see the parking lot and you see uh, the background. But you, if you look carefully, you see the shadows because there's are sunlight, right? You see the shadows of the car on the ground that dark spot. So she tried to make some in, something disappear, the car disappear, invisible. But actually, it's not a true science. Of course, you see the shadows. So this is great try of in arts, but it's not a pure uh, invisibility cloak, okay? So let's see how we can make a invisibility cloak. This is a Professor John Pendry's a cartoon. Uh, to show how this works. Um, this blue actually uh, shell is the invisibility cloak. This orange uh, uh, cavity is where you can put anything inside, whether it's a bird or egg or something inside, you want to make it disappear. So what happened is this cloak actually surrounded this object will make it disappear. So that's the essence of invisibility cloak. So what happened? is that the light, light beams coming from the left is like water flowing through a rock, okay? And after they threw this, yellow, uh, this, this uh, blue uh, cloak, and they come out the cloak. So what happened is the, what, the light ray or like a water wave uh, flows through this uh, blue uh, cloak in a actually curved uh, path. 
but compared with the straight line outside of the cloak, it's a longer pass, right? But when they come out, we want them to meet uh, others, uh, light particles uh, actually on the straight line. So to the people downstream, they see nothing changed. What is that required for? Actually, that requires this blue cloak actually has to accelerate the light inside of the uh, media, this blue cloak. That means light has to move faster inside of cloak than outside of cloak. So how you do that? Well, these uh, magic uh, metal materials will be able to do so, enable the light actually travels faster, travels faster. So as you can see on the right side, these uh, 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 red blue strips, this is the light waves passing through uh, this cloak and this is a computer simulation, okay? And after the passing through this cloak and object, then their wavefront reconstruct as a undisturbed uh, wavefront, as if nothing happened, nothing disturbed. That means you don't see things. The way actually we see there is a, 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 a object there, it, because the light refract or, or scatter towards your eye and you see the light rays are perturbated. Now, if you don't see them perturbated, you believe nothing happened. Right, so that's how you make something disappear. This, so this is the essence of science, and we spent uh, uh, twenty years to study how make to make this uh, uh, blue materials, and that can make light travels differently than in air, and that is how uh, uh, this become uh, uh, twenty years of effort. Many students, over hundred students, uh, PhD students, and and uh, uh, postdocs in my laboratory, we have focused on this single. Uh, objective. So uh, later on, uh, colleagues around the world uh, are raising how to make uh, uh, different cloaks and so on. Um, uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, 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 a group of scientists in Singapore. They also made a cloak later on um, uh, in collaboration with Zhejiang University in China. So this actually, as you can see, there's a, there's a uh, a piece of cloak here is the rectangular glass. What, what I'm using the um, water, you can see my mouse is moving, moving, right? You can see, okay? So this piece of actually cloak here, mm -hmm. now on the background, there's a flower. Occasionally there could be a bee or something flying uh, over, but then, then we will see a cat, a live cat is more moving across this cloak and part of the body can be disappeared of the cat. We have a butterfly. This cat is gonna come in into the cloak. You see tail disappear and part of the body disappear. And also if actually cat, uh, the lower part of body is a transparent because you see um, the, the flowers, the leaves uh, are passing through the cats, right? That's exactly actually light ray coming from flowers and going through the cloak around the cloak coming out through our audience eye and us if actually cats uh, lower part of body not exist, make it disappear, make it disappear, right? So let's look at the other example. Now, this is a fish tank. <clears throat> so instead of this fish tank, um, there, there's a cloak here, okay, this cloak. And uh, this cloak, by the way, there's, there's a diagram on the left. Uh, the library comes in and, and they move through this uh, cloak and there's a hole in the cloak. There's a uh, uh, light blue uh, hexagonal hole. This is a space. Uh, actually, all of these are immersed in the water where the fish, actually there's the goldfish inside of a hole and they can come out or inside, but if, once they are inside of a cloak, you don't see them at all. You see the background, the leaves, okay? But they can pop up, so let's see. And there's a, in, uh, a gentleman actually outside of a tank using the stick to uh, stir the water so that the fish comes out. Otherwise, you don't see the fish. So let's see, try to. So you see the tails of the fish at the bottom. Let, let me replay again. Oops. Let me go back to. Okay. Let me. Uh, so, tail, you will see a, a fish tails here because uh, upper body of the fish is inside of cloak. You don't see them. But you see the background 
of the uh, plants that are passing through this clear cloak, right? And you don't see the body of uh, the fish. You see the tail of the fish here? They are going inside. Now they are emerged to the top, but you don't see the, okay. The head of the fish coming out, but the body is inside of the cloak. That's why you don't see them. And you can see the fish actually, uh, a mouth is open and closed, like a usual fish, live fish uh, doing. And try to stir in the water so that fish can come out. So it's a live fish. Okay. So um, these two um, really demonstrate uh, the uh, uh, making something disappear, uh, invisible is indeed possible, is indeed possible. A century ago, uh, people write this into novel that try to achieve this goal. Um, but um, uh, 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 last 20 years, the science indeed advanced uh, a lot of this. Um, so I'm lucky actually, uh, my student and I have been participating in this uh, uh, activity and, and through our research discoveries that we made it possible that the cloaks indeed uh, can be realized. But there are many scientists around the world actually uh, uh, join efforts and uh, make uh, this field now is a very flourish, uh, 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 flourishing uh, 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 in many applications. So um, at 2008, my son was about eight years old. Um, he said, well, this cloak is not cool. It's quite bulky, whether it's made by glass or something. It's like a big hat on your uh, on your head. Now, if you want to make your face disappear, you have to cover a very big a triangle thing on top of your head. Even though I cannot see it, but I can touch it, right? He said, well, daddy, one day, if you can invent something like a sun blocker, like this uh, cream, you can spray on your face and your face disappear, that would be great. So that inspired me uh, in the uh, next seven years really looking at how you can build a skin cloak. That means very tiny, tiny thin skin cloak you can put on your face, you disappear. So this was the first skin cloak we made in 2015. That is, that was after eight, seven years later, this bulky cloak was, was built. Then we actually built uh, this uh, thin cloak of a very conformal skin-like uh, cloak that renders a 3D object disappear. So what is the application? Well, many applications as you, as you can imagine. Um, if we can make something uh, disappear, of course, um, there, uh, 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 we can uh, make something called augmented reality. Some of our friends here uh, like play video games. Uh, there's a virtual reality, the next frontier called augmented reality. You can actually have some uh, boy or girl dance in a music like TikTok, but you can actually superimpose something on your head. Therefore, you can be a tiger head, a human body, right? That can be a new form of arts. Now, let's take a look at more other applications such as uh, in the future, one can have a smart watch that can project a screen out of this watch in air, okay? That's a possibility or you can hold a 3D object in your hand, okay? Now, others can be also really helpful for our doctors to do surgery, okay? Now, uh, in the near future that we can imagine, uh, this is actually a Microsoft uh, 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 developed similar techniques now uh, for the application where they have this uh, magic uh, 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 glass and they can see uh, through some of the bodies, uh, so-called Microsoft HoloLens, okay? So this new type of optical uh, magical tool will enable doctors, especially young doctors, to have a very precise medical surgery as the older doctors, because uh, senior doctors will, based on their experience, when they touch, they know where's a kidney, where's a liver, and so on. But now young doctors with this uh, 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 a special uh, lens, they will see uh, you know, uh, through some of the bodies it, during the operation, during the operation. 
The other is more interesting. Uh, this is made by um, the uh, 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 two a young scholar uh, who are uh, working in this field. Um, and as you can see, this piece of plastics, which are transparent, but it has a magic. Uh, it's built by the same scientific principles we discovered 20 years ago, where by arranging these meta atoms to form this piece of plastic, these are glass beads essentially inside of plastic. If you arrange them in the right way, we can make this piece of plastic, put into uh, uh, your window in the summertime. It can cool down your room, hot room, without using electricity. So how this works, essentially, is the air conditioning without using electricity. That is very cool. That is very cool, not only for economic reason, but also actually can save a tons of uh, CO2 emission uh, to the environment and save our Earth. You know that. So the scientific principle here is we are designing this uh, small bits particles inside of this plastic film. These are tiny, tiny. Uh, you cannot uh, uh, you, you cannot see them in the lake eye, but they can re resonate with the hot air inside of the room. Therefore, transmit the heat from the hot room to the outer space. There's a big, big refrigerator outside of Earth. And that is minus 270 degrees, so-called universe, okay? Now, why we cannot do that usually? Well, because we are living the Earth and outside of Earth, there is a atmosphere. These are thick layer of air, okay? And, uh, 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 you know, tens of uh, 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 miles of thick, okay? Very, very thick. And inside of this, there's a lot of, uh, uh, gases, and these gases will reflect a lot of infrared light. Therefore, we are trapped, so-called greenhouse effect. That's how the uh, uh, global warming is. But designing these magical materials, we will be able to look for a window of this atmosphere, which is a blanket of gas over the Earth that has an opportunity window that is between uh, uh, six to 10 microns where this light wavelengths can escape from the Earth. Others will be reflected back to Earth. That's why we have a greenhouse effect. Now, with these materials, we will be able to transform the heat from the room to the outer space, uh, atmosphere, passing atmosphere, because that's the window we designed through these uh, magic materials. So this actually uh, with uh, maybe a, a two meter by two meter plastic film on your window, and you can cool down a room uh, seven or eight degrees. And that's amazing, that's amazing. So this invention uh, won the uh, 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 physical world uh, in 2017 as the breakthrough of the year. So as you can see, when we do a basic science, it takes us uh, 17 years to translate into a real application. Now there's a company now commercialize this technology. And the other, uh, again, when we develop the science, we never thought about application into the agriculture, helping actually to feed more people. Uh, so we know that how we increase the agriculture uh, food production is a, a very uh, a big challenge for the human uh, society. How we can feed more and more people on the earth, right? So. These are uh, uh, examples I will show you. Here, there are two uh, uh, sort of a greenhouse here. One is actually with a plastic roof. Uh, basically, it's a transparent roof, uh, like what we see on the uh, typical uh, 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 farm, right? There's a greenhouse there. There's a plastic, uh, 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 this white uh, roof. And the light, sunlight passing through the roof and going to the plants. And if you're giving, a certain air and water, the plant will grow. So there are three things you need to grow the uh, plant or vegetables, water, air, and sunlight. Okay, you need three things. So on the right, this red house, essentially the uh, roof is made by these magic materials it is a red like, red like, okay? It's, we designed the material inside, therefore, the sunlight comes in actually 
and shining through this uh, roof or plastic. So you will see over the period of about 20 days, and these uh, two set of plants, they have the same air, same water, same nutrition, everything is the same, except that the top roof is different. Plastic is different, okay? This magic uh, plastic is the red plastic, okay? So let's play the video. This is a fast moving video. We are taking about 20 days, but I'm going to play that within probably uh, one minute. So you can see each day it's probably five seconds because the, we are fast moving the camera. So this is June 2020, about one and a half years ago. You see, every hour is like every second because we are moving fast in the movie. This is a video taped over 20 days, but we play very fast. So in about 20 days, you see the difference. Which one grows faster? was given the same water, same the nutrition, same air. This one with the red, actually roof, right? Red uh, plastic. That is because actually this is uh, uh, the production in, in the, under these magic uh, materials uh, as a plastic on the top um, gives you about 20 to 30% of the more production of the vegetables. And that is a huge in agriculture sense, okay? That is going to be tremendously impact uh, our agriculture production and growth of the plants, uh, vegetables, and, and so on, and food and, and uh, uh, rice. Okay, so it's very very important. And you never imagine twenty years ago uh, a physics discovery can translate into uh, agriculture impact. So with this, I probably conclude my talk uh, here today and. I hope this uh, small seminar uh, gives you a taste of how the fundamental science can, can translate or transform our, our life in daily life, whether in agriculture, in our air conditioning, and, and so on. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> That's, that got me so excited, Professor. Uh, I think uh, those findings and uh, what you just present it, make me feel there's a, a, a tremendous hope in human life, okay, that will be, uh, our life will be better and everything, uh, that life will be transformed by science. Invisibility cream. Okay,等我問下教授先,如果嗰啲cream查落去呢,唔好唔見咗塊面,淨係唔見咗啲皺紋得唔得先,教授,那個invisibility okay, cream,你剛才說查了之後就整個人不見,不不要那麼快,可不可以先把那個皺紋啊,那些不好的臉上的東西把它把它隱形,這個這個有沒有可能?Yeah, that's a possible. In fact, actually when I interview with a reporter, uh, that was uh, uh, 2008 when this discovery was made, um, the, uh, in fact, actually, uh, the, we don't know actually the application. At that time, uh, it takes us 10, 15 years to figure out what are the major breakthroughs we can make in the uh, daily life. But at that time, I joked that, you know, at least you can make uh, 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 somebody is uh, very choppy, uh, chubby and looks like a, has a six pack. Wow. I might eat that. Okay. <laughs> okay. 就是就是教授,這話呢,這封著,我個也最好呢會整到幾個有腹肌,有腹肌對不對?就是可以有這種效果。那那以後就是實在變變美太太容易了,這個科技。That's possible. That's possible. Okay. All right. 這話教授話呢,還得嘅,這咩都有可能,這話嗰啲 cream cream查都發現到呢,哇,得可以瘦啲啦。Okay, the next question, uh, Professor, I, I, I hope I will not get you in trouble when you, if you are to answer my question, okay. Um, the, the CNN interview is about 2008 by your student, uh, talking about the invisibility clock, okay. 2008, 
is about、uh, 24 years ago, right? 14. 14 years ago. Sorry, sorry, my bad math. 14 years ago. Okay. Okay. My question to you, Professor. Okay. 十四年在科学里面简直是很长的一段日子了，是不是？其实这个隐形的一已经出现了。你没有告诉我们，呃，是不是其实已经在用了？其实我们都啊，有没有可能呢？不，当然这个呢，实际上真正在应用的上面呢，就是说 ，depend on 这个它的呃，这个 cost is the other issue 啊，就是说它的成本啊。那教授，你你你回答的很技巧啊，你回答的很技巧。OK， 嗯，如果不计成本的话，那已经存已经存在了。但是呢，你要是要。啊、呃，要有一定的这个成本的话，啊、呃，那是啊、呃，这个啊、呃，就是你的意思。现在的话，就是变成在超级市场有的卖的话，这一天还没有来到。但是如果有人不计成本的话，嗯、其实这个隐形衣可以存在，是不是这个意思？可以存在，可以存在。哇 ，OK， 嗯，那那我我我有没有什么破绽可以看到？我们就留意一下旁边呃。应该这个可以哦、嗯，那当然是有破绽。就像我儿子那时候讲的，他说你要去用手摸一摸，能摸到的他，摸到这个， okay. 呃，因为它还是一个 physical 的 object， 尽管是 transparent、okay.。对，哇，教授，这个这个，你今天这个答案给我很很大的开阔。OK， 好，那那我知道在在这个呃电话旁边有很多很多人对这个议题都非常有兴趣啊。教授，你你准备好了吗？好多问题啊。我们现在呃，苏一回答。呃，首先 ，first of all，I think， 呃、uh, ，Jason，Jason，Yes，Hello，Jason。Jason? Hello, um, Jason. Hello. Um, first of all, I like to, to say a big thank you to Professor Zhang and Mr. Ngai. Uh, okay. I see that uh, the creation of the invisibility cloak is very fascinating, and I really believe in the future of this marvelous creation. Um, I like to raise a question about how to popularize this invention. So as far as I know, is it is currently not in mass production. Besides,、uh, I imagine the cost of production would be quite high.、Mm -hmm. So I like to know how we can overcome these obstacles in order to popularize this invention.、Mm -hmm. Okay.、Um, yeah, talking about mass production now. Yeah. Ah,、uh, uh, Jason, very good question. Ah,、uh, in fact, this is the.、Uh, Uh, I think the science engineer has to solve the problems uh, uh, in the year to come. Fortunately, I don't have to deal with it.、Uh, now I'm a university administrator. I have many other things to worry about to how I support uh, uh, my colleagues' research. But come back to your question, indeed. <clears throat> But actually,、uh, even、uh, the, this is one of the thing very、uh, interesting science. Even something very difficult.、Um, It inspires a lot of people to do so, but at the same time, there are other creative people using this for some other purposes. For example, the last few examples I give, even though we didn't make something invisible, but we actually can make a plant grow faster, right? We can make、um, the uh, 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 cooler, uh, the room cooler, cooler,、okay. right? Without yeah, right. using electricity, yeah, yeah. those are even bigger. Uh, uh, impact,、uh, as you can see, right? So there are many uh, uh, creations of variations、um, of this uh, this uh, uh, type of invention. And, but I also have to say, many scientists in the world, in Europe, U.S., and in Hong Kong, actually,、uh, we、uh, many of scientists work together and try to continue this.、Uh, but I, I will say, yeah,、um, the, the the mass production is one of the things. Uh, people are continue pursue.、Um, on the other hand,、um, we are looking at the invisibility cloak, of course, on the optical regime. But if we are looking at the microwave and other wave wavelengths,、uh, there are also different applications. Yeah. So. Wow. Okay. So Jason, you happy with that? Yeah.、Um, a big thank you to Professor Zhang, and I like to. Ask one more thing, if you don't mind. So、uh, you have mentioned that we can u make use of this technology to、um, make the room cooler without using electricity. Do you think that it, one day it will be possible for us 
uh, to use it in a household, in a domestic uh, setting? Um, I believe so. In fact, actually, this is uh, uh, already commercialized. Uh, okay. It's in the, uh, in fact, there is a company already set it up. And um, uh, I was told actually the first, uh, they already got the first contract in an airport, um, somewhere very hot. So, uh, you know, airport has a lot of glass, uh, you know, uh, uh, so they, they uh, are trying out there. So it's uh, actually in the process of application. Okay, very hopeful, Jason. I hope uh, in a very uh, not long distance, okay, we will have this product uh, realized. And then uh, I think it would tremendously uh, increase our life quality. Thank you, Jason. And uh, next question will be raised by Gloria. Hello, Gloria. Gloria Liao. Hello, um, thank you for the talk. It was really informational and um, I learned a lot. But um, my question was actually a little bit unrelated to what uh, uh, the topic was. It was actually about um, how do you think that um, compared to when you're an undergraduate, how has a science student's struggles and their education has changed tremendously? Like um, thinking about COVID and thinking about development and thinking about almost on the verge of World War III. So how would you see that as a struggle that we are facing? Okay, uh, Gloria, first of all, before the president answer your question, I must do justice for the president. I think your time and the president's time is not that long, okay? So president is very young. <laughs> but okay, go ahead. I'm very president. sorry. All right, it's fine, it's fine. He understands you, okay. Yeah, well, I guess uh, you want to ask uh, as an undergrad student, typical undergrad student going through uh, this, uh, you know, this unprecedented time, right? And then not only we have, pandemic, we also had uh, in Hong Kong, especially we went through a uh, very uh, major social event. And now we have a geopolitics and the uh, Russian, Korean, uh, uh, Ukraine war. And these are really, uh, in fact, is a, a very uh, trying time. And uh, uh, Hong Kong hasn't come out of this uh, pandemic yet, even though we see some light in the tunnel. Um, yeah, it's difficult, it's difficult. And I think actually uh, this uh, difficult time also translates into our education. As you know that we, most of our teaching has been on off from online and offline and in, 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 in person. And um, that also calls for really a deep thinking of education itself. Um, <clears throat> how we, um, I've been discussed with uh, my VP and uh, 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 colleagues here in Hong Kong U, that how we can effectively enhance our teaching online. Now, uh, many people think that teaching online, it may be uh, distracting and so on, but there also has some interesting, uh, surprising benefits as well. For example, we, we found that some uh, undergrad students, uh, typically they are shy in a uh, uh, face-to-face instruction in the classroom. They don't want to ask questions and so on. But now, once they are online, actually they type a lot of questions to teachers and so on. So there are some benefits where uh, we can see, but again, there's a lot of challenges I can imagine. And so even after pandemic, we have to really think hard how we're going to transform our education because uh, on the other hand, uh, the tremendous, tremendous use of online uh, materials, teaching, and so on. <clears throat> Even today, we are actually using a Zoom uh, to do our, our webinar to do this seminar. Uh, it's, a, it's a really unimaginable 20 years ago. So how the education will look like, because a Hong Kong U student today can access almost everywhere in the world, other classrooms online. So uh, how we are going to keep the university education competitive? Because now the customer, our student, they don't have to actually attending a classroom in Hong Kong U, but they can go to uh, a MIT classroom online or go to other places as well. So this is a big uh, challenge, but interesting challenge as well. Yeah, thank you, President. I think uh, you're right. Uh, with internet, the world becomes very small now, okay? 
but through internet we can have a bigger world view even though uh, in this very testing time uh, rather than break down we can use seize the opportunity to break through so that's what we are talking about with the uh, university education and and uh, we are very glad uh, and and very grateful to your leadership to need the university uh, on this matter thank you and uh, the next question <clears throat> will be uh, serene serene hello hello can you guys hear me yes <laughs> Thank you. Um, so firstly, thank you, Professor Jam, for sharing because um, you've literally made our um, dreams come true, the <laughs> invisible cloak. And it's really amazing to see how technology can do so many powerful things. So my question is, um, from a scientist perspective, um, how would you um, think that people should balance between developing technology and being independent by ourselves because there are actually a lot of theories or even like movies which say that oh if we are too dependent on technology then for humans we actually um deter our own abilities as well a brilliant question so uh, are we the president are we going to be one day uh the humankind will be controlled by our own creation scientific creation per se Excellent question. And this is actually even more philosophical, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I guess um, a lot of uh, scholars already raised this issue. Um, uh, but on the other hand, the human, uh, we are different than any other um, uh, 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 species on Earth or in the universe. That is, we can think, we can create, we can imagine, right? So um, my personal view, is that uh, whatever technology we create, of course, there's a, a, there's a, a, a downside of it. <clears throat> For example, the cell phone today, uh, a mobile phone today we are using, um, some kids become very addicted to, right? <clears throat> so um, there, there are always actually pros and cons of each invention, each technology and so on. And I, I'm sure some of our audience here, uh, viewers, can imagine what are the downsides of invisibility cloak as well, if some bad guy want to use it, right? So um, it's true, but uh, I think actually, uh, this is the uh, one of the things that our engineers and scientists need to keep in mind, that we need to actually, while we imagine or create new, new things, new tools, we have to imagine what are, uh, 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 be cautious, what are the, you know, uh, unwanted uh, you know, uh, uh, effects. Uh, for example, um, even cell phone, let, come back, let me come back to cell phone. Uh, 2003, um, I was a technologist uh, directing a national research center. It's a technology center. But at the same time, I spent a, a small project actually, uh, have a few social scientists and to study how uh, that time the cell phone just began in, in early 2000. Um, how that could negatively impact the society. For example, at the time we tried to study people with a phone uh, for whatever reason, when they are on the phone, walking on the street, making loud, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, talking, um, that is not good. It's disturbed, you know, uh, society and, 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 and so on, right? It's, uh, so there is always a reconcile, uh, you know, uh, between, um, uh, how the new technology and how we use it. And that's a brilliant question that, that we have to think all the time. Thank you. Balance, I think, uh, Professor. Yes. Balance, OK. Because the time is actually, I know that we should be a big business. But we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. I want to ask a question to ask a question. Now, there are a lot of platforms, platforms, and platforms. 講嘅嘢啊，或者需要知嘅，好快就傳到出去，或者好快收到一方面嘅信息。但係咧，亦都變咗咧，好似而家嘅信息咧太多太亂啦嚇。咁誒，香港亦都係一個誒信息非常之誒透明嘅地方咧。咁亦都有唔同嘅人咧係發表呢個聲音。誒，我想問下誒教授啦，你覺得誒唔同嘅意見係對香港嘅發展係有利啊，定係有害？教授，你觉得现在科技那么发达，就是现在的资讯啊传得很快，那香港也是一个呃相对开明啊自由的地方，大家都可以抒发自己的见解。你觉得呃不同的意见对香港未来的发展是是好事还是一个呃障碍呢？嗯、um, 
，我认为啊，一个多元的社会，多元的声音是一个好事儿。啊、呃，这个对社会、对大学、对人类的发展都是一个非常啊、呃、好的事情啊、呃，因为有多元的这个啊啊啊这个声音和多元的这个思考，这样呢，我们才有新的这个啊、呃、理念和新的进步啊、呃，所以呢，我认为一个多元的社会、多元的声音是好事，但是同时呢，我觉得呢。我们要有一种呃，培养一种文化，也就是说，我们要不但是容许自己多元，也要容许别人都多元。也就是说，也要耐心听不同的意见，自己的意见当然也要表现出来，但是呢，别人的意见也要听。那么，只有这样呢，才能互相知道我们的 difference 在什么地方，大家才能 reconcile 我们的 difference。那么，呃，如果有这样的这个效果呢，这个社会啊，就会凝聚共识。大家有共同的想法，比如说像现在香港的社会，我们怎么样在疫情之后，尤其在香港经历了这么三年之后，我们香港人怎么样大家齐心协力来把香港建设好 ？Well, we have different ideas. That's fine. That's great. A, a vibrant society need to have different ideas, need to have different views, even though we may disagree. But we need to all think about along one goal. That is. How we can build up our Hong Kong society? Now, this is from another angle. If everyone is firm in their own beliefs, well, uh, if, if you don't agree with me, I will, you know, have a problem, uh, with you. And this kind of attitude is not good. I hope that the Hong Kong society is not only diverse, but also allows others to be diverse. So, in this kind of society, especially after the pandemic, the Hong Kong society, the Hong Kong citizens, we should think about what we should do. 我们的社会怎么发展？下一步，我们香港怎么样能保持我们国际的这个啊、呃、大都市的地位？呃，不单单是我们的呃这个产业，同时我们的文化、我们的这个呃包容性都应该有。呃、只有只有这样，香港的社会才能向前进步。是，谢谢校长啊。就是说，自由的最基本的这个原则跟价值，就是说，我也尊重别人的自由嘛，对不对？这这个是最大的互相的尊重哈，呃，在呃呃最后啊，就是今天呃，第一非常高兴校长能抽时间来跟我们做呃这么好的一个一个呃课堂哈、啊，呃也让很多人非常的我我听完之后我也觉得很兴奋，就是很有希望啊，科学真的是能够改善人类的呃问题，或者是呃提升人类的这个呃生活品质，但同时呢也让我们反思很多。呃，人类的未来啊、哦，它不只是发展，但是这个发展的里面，我们也要有一个哲学的思考在里面。那校长刚才也是在呃科学层面的哲学层面，也是帮助我们啊了解的更多。那最后呢，就是谈到呃我们香港最近的这个情况，就是疫情的这个呃非常的呃严重。虽然我们已经过了一个高峰哈，但是还是不能松懈。那站在我们这个疫情抗防疫抗疫的第一线呢，是很多呃非常勇敢的呃香港人哈，在保护着呃香港。那这个其中呢，有很多是香港大学的校友啊。那校长，你作为我们学校的呃校长，你觉得在这个时期哈，呃，你有什么话跟香港人说，或者是站在第一线的呃我们的校友？谢谢。好，谢谢。呃，我想啊，这个疫情当中，我们很多香港人都对社会做出了杰出的贡献，啊、呃，尤其是我们的医护、医生、护士，还有很多他们这个呃支援的人员，啊、呃，我要向他们致敬，感谢他们为香港的付出和贡献。那么同时呢，呃，我也要向不单单是香港大学所有的这个医护，包括医管局的、中文大学的、医医学院的所有的同仁，对香港社会的贡献表示感谢。那么我想呢，啊、呃，在这个时刻啊，我们香港大学，呃，过去这几个月，一直是，其实过去两年了，一直是在为香港社会，几乎每一天，我们的研究，我们的这个深入社会的调查，包括我们啊、呃、几位教授给政府做顾问，都为这个香港的疫情啊、呃、控制和他的这个治疗做出了很多很好的建议，呃和贡献。那么。呃，疫情呢，我想呢，目前是控制住了，但是呢，啊、呃，还有很多啊、呃，现在有的学者在谈第六波
第第七个 wave， 第六个 wave， 嗯、呃，呃，当然我想讲呢，就是说，呃，我觉得香港这个社会，我们的市民啊，还是非常呃呃坚韧的。那么尽管呢，呃，有很多社会呃，我们在疫情对付的上面有不足的地方，但是我想讲一句，讲一句，我觉得我们香港人应该 proud of our ourself， 我们做的还是不错的，还是不错的。嗯、um, ，尽管有这样那样的困难，也有 challenge， 呃，但是我们呃还是尽了我们最大的努力，而且做的，我个人认为还是啊、呃、可以的。那么，当然不断学习，不断进步，我们吸取以前的教训。那么，在未来呢，我想啊、呃，我们现在就要开始思考一个问题，不单单是每天在思考我们怎么样在疫情下过生活，同时也要思考，开始思考疫情以后。香港怎么样重新出发？那么香港的未来的路怎么走？我相信很多香港市民都有思考。那么啊、呃，我希望呢，我们大家啊、呃，这个呃，能够多听别人的思考，啊、呃，多发表意见，同时呢，也尊重别人的意见。只有这样，我们香港才能找出自己的这个未来之路，也为香港的未来闯出一个新的这个天地。谢谢谢谢,谢谢教授，今年呢也是香港大学的一百一十一周年哦。那呃，当然这个一百一十一周年将会是我们大家都非常难忘的一个一百一十一周年，因为呃香港所发生的事情，而且是呃非常值得我们记录下来，作为我们以后的很多的一个反思的空间哈、哦。那呃，在呃过去香港大学不管在香港的很多很多很重要的时刻。我们都呃站在第一线啊，为香港呃做出呃奉献。就像校长所讲的，陆友堂在香港不同的时代，他都在发挥不同的。呃，今这一次呢，校长也是呃非常非常的，我觉得非常的感动啊，也把陆友堂呃作为一个疫苗接种的一个中心，帮助了很多的人。那呃，在后疫情时代，刚才校长谈到的不只是疫情，就是说在疫情之后，我们何去何从？那这个这个，我先问校长，在一百一十一周年的今天哈、啊，今年我们看后疫情时代之后的香港大学，它将会有些什么样的新的发展？你将会带领香港大学往哪一个方向去走呢？啊、呃、啊、呃，谢谢 Water， 这个呃，疫情之后，我们也对香港大学的发展做了很多的思考。啊、呃，今天上午还和我们的啊、呃、这个学校的呃这个中层和。啊、呃，我们的校领导大家在一起啊、呃，这个讨论一些问题。那么我认为呢，这个呃，尽管香港社会啊，呃，实际上是很现代的一个社会，我们的香港市民也很有素质的。呃，经历了这么过去这十几年的这个发展，我们也看到了香港社会啊，还是有很多啊、呃、存在的一些问题要要解决。那么啊、呃、，looking forward 呢，我觉得我们不能停留在香港。呃，这个呃，过去的这个呃辉煌上，我们应该想到未来如何发展。首先呢，我觉得呢，我们香港大学啊、呃，作为一个大学，要引领社会的文明，引领社会的文明。也就是说，我们啊、呃，在香港大学不但我们要做好我们学生和这个呃老师的科研、学生的教学，同时呢，要为这个社会呃，比如像这次的疫情，我们的医学院啊。我们的甚至工程学院都做了很大的贡献。另外一个就是说，在长远的未来，我们香港大学如何为社会做贡献，这是一个很大的一个课题。啊，这个不单单是啊简单的一些方面，同时呢，我们啊要呃为这个社会的一些呃，比如说基本的层面，那我们的工学院能不能创造一些新的啊制造这个啊啊房屋的这个 low cost 但是 high quality 的？这样的一个新的技术是吧？我们的文学院能不能为未来的香港的文化发展？尤其我们知道香港是一个东西方文化的之都，那么今后未来呃这个香港呃这个文化的发展呃什么方向？我觉得呢，我们的文学院、我们的其他都会做贡献。哎，当然我们医学院大家看到呃过去呃这几年的呃呃贡献也很多，所以呢这是一个。第二个呢，我在想我们呃。这个呃，香港大学不单单是香港的，也是中国的，也是全世界的。那么我们香港大学的国际化，就像香港这座城市一样，一定要做到最顶尖。过去这呃
三到四年吧，我们香港大学都是列在这个呃全球最国际化的大学。那么怎么样，这个在全球最国际化大学这个上面呢，来把我们的研究工作做好，来把教学工作做好，我们的学生，我们真正做到，呃，不单单是国际化，就是说。啊、呃，很简单的，很多人认为国际化就是有很多外国的学生、外外国的老师在这里教书学习，其实不是这样的。其实呢，真正的国际化是思想的国际化，是你的思想要 go beyond what we have today。所以的话呢，这个思想的国际化是很重要的，而不取决于你皮肤的颜色、你的这个从哪里来的怎么样，而是你的观念、你的 foresight、你的远见。这这些都是很重要，我们要培养我们的学生，啊、呃，这个呃呃，生长在香港，但是我们要放眼世界，放眼世界，哎，所以啊、呃，这样的这个呃呃，我想这几点都是非常重要。然后，香港大学作为亚洲的顶尖大学，如何成为世界的顶尖大学？怎么样去领导世界的潮流？这也是我们在考虑的一个问题。我们怎么样让我们的学者变成全世界最顶尖的学者？我们创造最好的技术。所以，这些最好的文化啊、呃，这个这个呃，文化的研究、社会的研究，这都是我们香港大学要做的事情。谢谢校长啊，谢谢校长。香港大学作为香港最有历史的一个呃大学啊，它是立足在香港，但是我们希望我们呃的学者、我们的学生呢，他是在世界都能耀眼、耀眼生辉。我们的香港的呃 research， 香港的研究。香港的发明，香港的人才，可以为国家、为世界做出贡献。谢谢你，校长，谢谢张翔校长，今天为我们呃做了这么好的一个呃课，也是呃希望校长呢不要太辛苦啊。你看你呃刚刚来到任到现在啊，真的是看到非常非常的辛劳，呃也希望你呃身体健康，呃继续带领我们一起呃为香港。为国家、为世界做更多的事，谢谢你。哎，谢谢 Water， 谢谢各位啊、呃，这个观众，谢谢。OK，Thank、okay, you。先跟校长说一些，呃，再见。OK， 谢谢。好。呃，咁喺呢度咧，咁喺呢度真系要多谢啊，张长校长咧，头先同我哋讲嘅，你喺即系诶科学层面咧，亦都诶同我哋讲咗，其实喺诶、呃、香港大学嘅角色，诶、呃、虽然我哋系喺香港，我哋立足香港，但系我哋嘅舞台系世界。我哋希望誒將我哋嘅誒研究啦，誒可以令令到誒全世界都能夠得益嚇。咁啊一陣間咧，我喺度做一啲廣告先。咁啊講完科學之後咧，就係一個心靈嘅誒呢個課程啦。咁啊四點半咧陣咧會有係誒大觀禪師啦，同我哋咧係講點樣從零開始。科學誒嘅日新月異啊，好似帶領我哋去到好遠好遠好遠。但係其實誒人嘅初心，人嘅本來。其實係點樣嘅咧？誒、呃，一個人佢追求到最後，科學發展到最後，其實應該翻到去原點。而呢個原點係乜嘢咧？咁一陣間大官禪師咧就會同我哋誒詳細探討下。咁一陣四點半，記住留意我哋 Love Hong Kong，Love you， 拜拜。